John, welcome. Did you want to say something to me or anything like that? Uh, I, I kind of, right when I was going to add my thing, we lost you for a minute, and I, I kind of just said I was referring directly to Ramana's um, The Seer, The Seeing, and The Seen, and the removal of the label on the tree and the removal of the name here and then you're left with that sense of presence. Sense of? Presence. You are the seeing, which is the sense of presence I am. So I would have a different understanding to you then, John, in that case. Okay. So... See, many people say exactly what you said, John. Maybe I'm using, maybe I'm saying the same thing as you in different ways. I don't know. Um, the seer, the seeing, the seen, these three are all illusory. Many people say, oh, the see, if we take the labels off, then we're just left with something that is beyond labels, the presence the seeing there's a seeing that happens without there being a seer or a scene or without there being a subject and object there's just what is and this is for me this is not the true teaching at all you see all these three the seer the seeing the scene these are all illusion Bhagavan calls these the triputis triputi means the triads Seer, seeing, seen. You can do the same with all the senses. Hearer, hearing, heard. Taster, tasting. Tasted? Does that work? Yeah, that works. And all these three are um, creations of the ego, the I am, or the I thought, I should say. Now, Bhagwan Ramana gives us a clue. He says, if you go towards the seer, the seer, not the seeing and not the seen, the seer, you see, you've got this triad, this triputi, this trinity, seer, seeing, seen. If we let go of the seeing and we let go of the seen and we go to the seer, the subject, not what he says tom <laughs> sorry he's very clear he says you let go of the seer and you let go of the scene and you be the seeing this is his words not mine <laughs> and it's my experience as well like the seer it, it's ripping off your questioner um you can you can self-inquire about that sense I, and I loved what you said that, you know, there's brighter uh, lights along the branch, but in the end, what you come to is you can't find that I, period. There is no I. And what you're left with is a sense of I am. And within that sense of I am, there is seeing, there is tasting, there is touching. It's pure non-duality. There's no separation. So that's Ramana's teaching, as far as I know. Maybe you know something different here. And, and I'm completely open that you may know something more evolved than I do. Um, and if you do, I'm, I'm really curious. Take, take me there. Well, um, well, thank you for what you said, John, by the way. Thank you for that. 
I appreciate what you said. And I know you're too, I know you're speaking from your own experience. I can feel that in you. Mm. But thank you. Um, if, um, if you're open to something else, I am happy to continue. Otherwise, um, and you, you know, if you say you are, I'm happy to continue. Otherwise, um, I'm happy not to as well. It's up to you, John. I, I mean, if I'm really open, like if somebody says there's something beyond where they think I am, why I would never turn that down. Okay. Well, with your permission, I'll, I would, I'm very happy to continue. Right. And I'm also very happy for you to tell me I'm wrong, genuinely, um, I, or if you disagree. That's no problem for me at all either. And can I, ask, can I ask one thing about our interaction then, right? I yeah. just, maybe it's from being with some really humble teachers of this, right? But it's an analogy I made up, but it came from being with my teacher, right? If we're going to describe the interior design of the 15th floor of a penthouse apartment, I'm just going to say that both of us should be able to interrupt the other if there actually is no building, there's no foundation, and there's only water below. So that's the only thing I would say. And it's not interrupt out of rudeness. It's just like, if you're going to describe the chandeliers in the penthouse, I have a right to ask, is there a building? And yeah, so that's all. So I don't understand the fifth the, the penthouse analogy. I'm sorry, John. I don't understand I'm what saying, you're saying. With I'm, that. I'm saying if I experience you making some leaps, mm -hmm. into, oh. then I would just ask to see where the foundation is. That's all. Sure. Yeah. I mean, look, we can have a we can have a conversation, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, if you want to challenge anything or if you disagree with anything you're very welcome to do that you know i'm not no here to tell i'm not here to tell anybody what to do and i'm not here to tell anybody what to think and it's um for everybody here to make up their mind if they think what i'm saying is of any use to them whatsoever or not and it's everybody's liberty to question anything i say and to disagree with anything i say and even to say, Tom, I disagree. I think you're wrong. And, you know, that sounds like we have the same non-dual experience. Like for me, being you know, both Ramana and the Nisargadatta were part of the Nani path, and the Nani path is the path of intellectual investigation. And in that path, it's the idea that the false can't stand up to investigation. And so, when you look, it can't stand up to your own looking. So that sounds like we're both coming from the same place. Well, we, I'm sure we are. I'm sure we are, John. I have no doubt about it. We're coming from the same place. Very much, very much so. Um, maybe, maybe we'll leave it there for now. We've gone over anyway. I, if you don't mind, Tom, I would, if, if I would love to have this discussion with you because and not now, okay. if that's not your preference. Um, and it doesn't have to be on a zoom meeting either. Um, but if I'm very interested, if you think there's something I'm missing and that you've seen, and you can point that out to me, I would really like to participate in that discussion if you're okay well i'm happy to continue now if you want me to okay if, yeah. i mean i don't want to hold everyone else hostage maybe we should ask them they, they, okay. they, they will they will um they will drop off the call if they don't want to be here i'm sure okay, okay. great um great. let's okay um i mean so Bhagavan Ramana's teachings are very deep. They're very simple. 
very deep, commonly misunderstood. And if we misunderstand them and we adhere to our misunderstanding, we will not really discover what he's pointing at, which is incredibly simple, but inc incredibly profound at the same time. And it's simple, but it's also totally extraordinary. Um, very subtle. Subtle and very evident too. But what, what Bhagavan teaches us, you can read it in his writings. Um, he says, we should go, always go towards the subject. We should leave behind the objects, the seer, sorry, the seen and the seeing. We should let these go. We should go towards the I am, which is a subject. Now, when we do this, we dis and when we go into the subject, which is that which sees, we discover what we truly are. And when we discover what the subject, what we truly are, the seer, the seeing and the seen actually fade away. And we're left with the subject alone without the seer, I mean, sorry, without the seeing or the seen. And when we're left with the seer alone, the subject alone, that can no longer be called a subject. So it's not actually a subject. Through ignorance, it, it becomes the subject or the witness or the seer. But when we go towards the seer, we discover it is everything. It is the reality. And in that reality, there is no seer, seeing, or seen. And, for example, in his composition, Uludhi Narpadu, 40 verses on reality, Bhagavan describes this. Many of his um, writings, he describes this process. This is the process of self-inquiry. So in, let, me, let me just ask a question there. In your own experience with this teaching that you're talking about right now, have you ever experienced an absence of seeing? Yes. Can, that you, is... can you talk about that? Well, the thing, the problem is, is that it's not actually possible to talk about. You see, it is possible to talk about seeing and the seen and the seer, these three. But it's not possible to talk about when that is not there, actually. But that is honestly my only experience, is that which there is no triputi, no duality. So your current all. experience is that, that there is no seer, no seeing, and no seen? Basically, yes. Can you tell me more about that? Well, I can't really. But it is shared through silence, through being. It's, isn't it also shared through words? You can share it through words, yes. Isn't, isn't regardless? No, not really. Not really. I mean, you can share it through the words, but... Isn't it can't. there regardless of silence or words? You could say so, yes. Isn't it there regardless of whether there's a perception of a seer, a seeing, and a seen? Yes, you could say so. Truly... So Truly, truly, it's all there is. So why am I able to say it to you now? Why do I know its terms? What do you mean? How do I know this? What do you know? I know how to describe something that you can only say yes to. What have you described? I just described the only thing it can be, which is completely inclusive, that 
non-duality includes duality, that non-duality includes the illusion, that non-duality includes seeing, that non-duality includes the seer, the seen, and the seeing. And if you want to say that there's something that I haven't seen because it's a place that you can't put into words or point to, I think that that is part of how gurus get set up and not really the essence of the teaching. Like the teaching really is the, that the false can't stand up to investigation. So I'm just asking you, uh, say what you're saying and show them, point, point it. And it doesn't sound like you can. And I don't say that, you know, as a negative challenge, but I think this, this, the beauty of non-duality is it's much simpler than people make it out to be. It's so much more direct that its simplicity can't be seen. And inadvertently teachers do this. And, and inadvertently they, they offer carrots to donkeys. And the great teachers didn't do this. Ramana didn't do it. Nisargadatta didn't do it. It's self-evident. Now I can, I'm willing to believe that there's a place that you've seen that I haven't. And I'm here for the inquiry and I'm here to follow your pointers if you've got them. Thank you, John, thank you. I appreciate what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I guess maybe at the highest level, what I'm saying is we're in this together and there is no guru and there is no student. And at the end of the day, there is no Ramana because he wouldn't put up with it. That's the real understanding. Thank you, John. Thank you. You see, as long as there's a perception of duality, you said, you said the non true non duality um, includes the duality. Yeah. Um, this is not my experience at all. For me, this is wrong. Please explain, because yeah. we're having a we're two <laughs> we're two peers here. Sure, yeah. So, you know, in 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 the to put into words when the percep in the perception of non-duality, and it's not a perception, but I'm just using that word. There's no th there is no duality whatsoever. There is no you, me, he, she, they, them, whatever. None of that. As long as there's perception of anything, duality, body, mind, world, seeing, sin, there's suffering and duality and ego. This is um, the definitive teaching. This is the teaching. Sorry, I'm, I, maybe I'm missing something here. You're saying that if from a non-dual perspective, you acknowledge the illusion of duality, that non-duality can't do that? Is that what you're telling me? Yes, I think that's right. Really? Yeah. 
non-duality can't acknowledge the illusion of duality. Correct. Can you explain that? Well, you know what you said. You said that the illusion doesn't hold up to when you're when you ex investigate it or something like this. You said. Yes. So that's it. It doesn't. So the the duality doesn't hold up. Who says that? Sorry. So, is is it non-duality who says that the illusion doesn't hold up? Well, actually, non-duality can't say anything. Oh, non-duality is speaking all the time. It's speaking in silence. It's speaking underneath the words. It's in, when you make a prayer, when you suggest that everyone in this room prays to Ramana, you're literally asking them to listen to what's being spoken in non-duality. Literally ask them to listen to what is spoken in non-duality. Correct. Unless you're, you're turning Ramana into an object, which, which I believe in my heart you aren't. So it's that several devotees of Bhagwan um, wrote about this very discussion we're having, John. There, there was one devotee called Lakshmana Sarma, and he was the only devotee of Ramana's to have private tuition from Ramana about a specific about many of Bhagwan's teachings. They spent many hours together, and Bhagwan Ramana used to explain the teachings to Lakshmana Sarma in quite a lot of detail. And he was Lakshmana Sarma was the only devotee who had private tuition from Bhagwan Ramana about this ver this work called the 40 verses on reality, Uladu Narpadu. And Lakshmana Sama became very upset when he heard people saying things similar to what you're saying, John. So he wrote several books and co commentaries on Bhagwan's works um, to explain the true meaning of the teaching. One of the things he wrote is a commentary on the 40 verses on reality. Bhagavan Ramana used to say this was the best commentary available. Several of his works, Bhagavan used to write in it, he actually wrote out in his own handwriting and used to say, and used to sort of display it as well. So I, rec I highly recommend if you're interested in exploring what I'm sharing further, because it's not easy to understand. It doesn't necessarily make intellectual sense. If you're interested, I do recommend it. Recommend reading the works of Lakshmana Sarma, who goes into more detail. I, I'm more than willing. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll get that specific thing from you after we're done. Um, but maybe you, if you've read them and you have a deep understanding of it, maybe you can point out the. the I can. Uh, I can. I'm happy to, and that's what we're, part of what we do in this group. Okay, um, then, but I do recommend ahead. you have a read first because it will give you a structured you know there's so many problems with what I'm, what I'm saying you know on a logical basis you know and i think you're you're seeing that and and this book explains all that you see so it, it saves me having to it saves this back and forth plus we've gone over time there's an, there's another devotee called Sri Saduam who wrote about these kinds of issues as well. And he wrote a book called The Path of Sri Ramana. If Tom, if uh, I'm more than willing to read the 40 verses and I will do it in the next couple of days, I would love to have a discussion with you about those 40 verses and see if, if, I, if there's something that I'm missing, I'm really interested in seeing it. Wonderful, wonderful. So what I'd recommend is reading The Path of Sri Ramana. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to start with the first thing that you suggested because I, I yeah, you said. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend starting with the 40 verses because um, it, it's not explained in a comprehensive way. Um, Lakshmana Sama did write a book called Maha Yoga, um, which explains it in a fairly comprehensive way but the book i recommend to start off with is the path of sri ramana it's quite an easy to read book 
you can download it for free from tomdas.com. Um, so start off with the path of Sri Ramana, and then you can have a look at the commentary. On, I mean, they're all available on tomdas.com, the commentaries on the 40 verses. You can read that straight away if you want to, if you if you want to go to that. But have a look and um and see what you think. And very happy to have more discussions with you, John. No problem at all. Yeah, I, I would just say I've read quite a bit of Ramana, so I'm I'm just very interested in the thing that you seem to think I'm missing. Well, have a read of these books and see what you think, and then you're welcome to come back. Is that okay? Sort of. <laughs> I, I would... well, okay, I'll summarize what I'm saying again. I'll just summarize it. Summarize it, please, because I'm not a I'm not a foolish guy. Summarize it in okay. experientially so that I can follow you so that we're on the same page i you can give me the reference material which i'm more than willing to look at but yeah so have a read of the path of sri ramana summary is this what we truly are is the, is appears here in duality as the subject and we have to go towards the subject if we want to discover what we truly are if we go if we stay with the objects we don't discover non-duality. We don't discover our true self. We don't discover what Bhagavan truly is. I, but I never said that. I, I mean, we've got a recording of this. You've been recording it, so I'd love to see the recording. I, you, yeah. What have you never said? I'm saying I, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Well, I've never said that um, we don't gain insight into our true nature by paying attention to objects. Although I would say... There's some something to be gained by looking at objects very differently, for sure. That's why Ramana said that pointing about remove the label of tree from the tree. So it's, it's a beautiful pointing. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Have a read of the path of Sri Ramana, and this will it'll be interesting to see what your thoughts on it are. Okay. That's my suggestion. Thank you, John. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you, your, your, well, I appreciate the conversation and the discourse. Me too. I'm, I'm very interested in what you have to say or your, what you're pointing to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.